Yeah, I should say that I'm now joined, in case you couldn't tell, by uh, by Jeff Barrett from Poison and through the miracle of technology with Adrian Utley, who is in Bristol. Hello, Adrian. Hello, how are you? You ever done anything of that? You ever surfed, Adrian? I never have surfed, no. It's not, uh... I'm not either. I can't imagine I ever would, either. No. Let's pass over that. Don't hold your breath for the, uh, Port said surf <laughs> album. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but tell well, me to make the music, that'd be all right. Thing. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. a totally different thing. Yeah. Surf music, whole different thing. Absolutely, you're right, yeah. Well, none of the Beach Boys could surf, could they? One of them could surf because he was it Dennis. Dennis was the only <laughs> Dennis was the only one who could surf, apparently. Yeah. I love I love the fact that you know that. That's know, absolutely that. excellent. Well, I don't because that's a, that's just part of my brain where a pin number could go <laughs> instead or a password. <laughs> or not wetting your trousers. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, you travel fast, there. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> well, now we drag ourselves back to the subject in hand, <laughs> which is Portishead. Now, Portishead Third, which I love, is our featured album today. So, uh, but let, well, let's talk about that first. Let's talk about where did that come from? Because was it before to say it's the most? Let's let's address this to you first, Adrian, as you do Let's is, would it be fair to say you think that's the most experimental of the Portishead records thus far? I think it's perceived as that, yeah. and um, I guess we'd probably think that. Yeah. Um, I don't know, we were sort of in that world of making the music when we were doing it, so right. it felt like any other album in terms of trying to create it, but I guess it is. Our influences ca came wider, I think. Right, right. Would it be Would it be rude of me to ask what those influences kind of were? Um, oh, there's many. Yeah. Um, things like Silver Apples. Yeah. Um, we had been introduced to bands like Sun yeah. and Arm and people. Yeah. Um, so many things, right, just little okay. bits of things, okay. you know. Jeff, perhaps come to you, and how, how did you work on Third? Did you, did you go into a room and see what happened, or? No, it was very different, actually. Um, I mean, a, a lot of the work we've done in the past it was very kind of sampler-based. You know, we go into the studio, um, you know, uh, Adrian, um, and you know people like Clive and that you know on, especially on Dummy there'd be kind of sessions and jams and stuff and then that would go into the sampler and be chopped up and uh, and and obviously we were sampling from records and then our second record we we uh, put there put there we didn't really do that yeah and when it came to the third record um, it it there was very little that went into the sampler at all it was um it was just built up rhythm tracks right. um, and ideas the tiniest little kind of idea of like two bits of guitar or whatever. Um, usually painstakingly kind of like uh, thought about whether it actually was working or not and then kind of shipped out to different people's studios um oh, okay. adrian's uh, obviously got his studio and beth um as well and then so there would be kind of um cds flying back and forth and also in inspiration tapes as well weren't there we, we did yeah, have that playlist yeah. on your computer that was all the stuff that we were inspired by um around that time you know and there would just be w weird tracks uh, a moog record that would be with some incredibly cheap thing you know that was a cover version of something but just the okay. way just the way the yeah. whole thing was recorded on it and also i think the whole thing of getting into uh, into recordings that weren't perfect yeah uh, perfect pitch perfect reco actual recordings yeah. themselves yeah which um which we've become really bored of sure. in modern music would you agree adrian yeah, it's interesting because I'm mixing some music at the moment and um, that that whole subject of, of things that are slightly wrong uh, is what is uh, really interesting. And if it's really kind of, um, I've, no, I've gone off on a tangent slightly, but no, I think fine. it's the same kind of thing is uh, you're looking for the extraordinary, there's something really weird, the, the, the fact that the hi-hat's ridiculously loud or, yeah. you know, you have to, somehow they forgot the guitar and it's only in the reverbs returns and stuff and it's or the the arrangements odd uh, it's those things that kind of attract you and something i mean it, it, there's also you know the perfection of people like craft work who's yeah. utterly completely perf perfect is attractive as well but also the, the kind of off-centeredness of people like silver apples or plastic people of the universe and stuff sure yeah and um many things that you play on the on your show in fact well, I was exactly. say, I was, you know what i was gonna say with that blonde arrow trip it was any any was any stuff on this show that because i know you listen to this show did you hear anything yeah. on this show that might you know yeah definitely mm. um i mean i've heard you play pretty much everything that we've been in talked inspired about, by yeah. and talked by so um oh, yeah. fantastic yeah whether it be can or whether it be a plastic people of the universe yeah. or uh you know yeah. early synth stuff uh, yeah. uh, lots and lots of different stuff Great. you've played you know that imperfection you're talking about i love that about the earliest uh, ariel pink records do you know those records ariel pink's haunted graffiti those early records i don't sound no. like no 
they're still good, but they're much more polished pop now. But if you check out the doldrums in the first earliest Ariel Pink's Haunted Graffiti, they sound like someone's left a cassette in, like, the footwell of a hire car for six months, yeah. you know, <laughs> or, or in the bottom of a, or in the bottom oh, of a box at a jumble yeah. cell. And some people, yeah. some people absolutely hate it and go, oh, I've got cassettes that sound like this. It sounds like a level 42 cassette that's been left out in the rain. Mm. But I, <laughs> it sounds like there's memory, you know what I mean? It sounds old-fashioned yeah, and yeah. lost, and it's a beautiful uh. and really creepy sound, yeah. Very, do you have different and specific roles in the, in, in the studio in Portishead? I think we used to, but now it's kind of, um, on the last album it crossed over. Right. Um, you know, traditionally- Yeah, because you play more, Jeff plays way right. more than he used to, didn't okay. play. Yeah, really, I play a lot you? more drums yeah. now. I suppose it's makes me happy. <laughs> <laughs> and you do more studio stuff, so it's kind yeah. of like, it's definitely, yeah, it's definitely crossed over, and even Beth as well. Beth was doing lots of interesting things, people playing instruments and guitars and stuff, um, on the, on our last record. Yeah. I mean, the guitar on Threads is Beth playing. Right. It's fantastic. Right. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting, yeah. Well, the, the track you mentioned that's got Beth on guitar, Threads, we're gonna, gonna play that later on in the show. We're gonna play We Carry On, uh, in a moment. But tell, tell me what's happening right now with Portishead. Where, are you, are you in the process of a new record? Uh, no, we will be though. Um, right. basically we're both moving studios. Um, well, we're, all three of us are moving studios, I think, aren't we? Um, yeah, that's what we're in the process of that at the moment and gearing up for some live shows. Yeah, we're playing in, in Europe, Europe um, right. for five, uh, five shows. We did, six. did, oh, five, six, we did a big tour last year. Yeah. Um, and, uh, it was really good. And then once the studios are built, we're, we're kind of on it, you know. But the, but the way the music, the way the industry works now, I perhaps I should put that another way, the way the industry has collapsed now in some ways. <laughs> um, how, would that, that must be interesting because you've been kind of your own bosses for some time, haven't you? Now everyone's their own boss, aren't they, I guess? Yeah, I mean, we've been very specific about how we've always wanted to be portrayed and, uh, you know, and the way that we've released our music, um, and, um, even more so now. And we're, we're just very lucky that we've got these, this kind of sleeping giant of a, of our fans, uh, you know, and it's actually worldwide, which is really That's unusual. Right. Yeah. Um, and, and, um, we release a record, they go out and buy it, and then they want to go and see us play. We turn up, play, and it's a very simple kind of relationship, really. It's simple not- Simple but brilliant, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, like I said, we're really lucky. We haven't got to do the whole kind of hard sell. Yeah. Um, thing we actually people. do the opposite, I think, don't we? We, <laughs> yeah. we sort of try we disappear willfully. for ten years. Yeah. yeah, exactly, to destroy our careers. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> it doesn't, you know. It is an absolute honour that people. It's a real privilege that, um, and and le just touring last year somehow was more. Uh, it, it was kind of more visible in a way. Yeah. I don't know why. Yeah. But um, it was really cool and and really moving as well. But we're going to play. We carry on now. Is there anything to say about this? Do you know, it's been well, obviously, well, is, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> obviously, there's a massive Silver Apples influence okay. on this track. Yeah. Um, uh, but 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 we, we've kind of got to know Simeon, and he joined us on stage. Yeah. Um, uh, last year. Um, yeah, and it was in New York, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. He, and he was Before totally that. brilliant as well. So, yeah. Um, uh, and he's actually sung um, this live. He he actually oh, sings. We carry on. Oh, um, fabulous. Yeah, which, which is, is just, brilliant. He is totally brilliant. Something else we did, we lost the original version of our recording. Mm. Jeff and I recorded it, uh, we carry on, and then lost it. And it was one of our best tracks, and oh, we no. lost all the backing tracks, and we had to redo it. Yeah. Which is catastrophic for us. <laughs> it was. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I was going to say, I was going to say no offence, lads, but it's sadly as if you're putting putting out record every day, is it? Is no, it? exactly. Well, I think we we went over it with the coral. We recorded over it when we were. Tony, <laughs> you producing the coral. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I thought you were going to say. I think that's what happened. I thought you were going to say I recorded over it with Woman's Hour then. Or something uh, like no, that would. <laughs> could, could I just rephrase this? <laughs> could I rephrase this? Adrian recorded. Oh dear. Over. Oh, oh you know, dear. You're absolutely, Ooh. totally right. Domestic. Sorry. Domestic. <laughs> I was trying to, I, I was okay. trying to pass that on, but I yeah. couldn't get away with it. No, you kept on saying we. Wait, Beth, she's I know. Not, what do you blame Beth? She's not here. <laughs> yeah, Beth did, did it. it. Beth, Beth did, did it. it. Yep. Well, let's relive those happy memories now, as we hear, uh, uh, Poise Head from Third and We Carry On. Thank you ever so much for doing this, guys. Oh, thanks for having us. Cheers. Yeah, cheers. It's, um, brilliant being in this tiny little room in Bristol. <laughs> <laughs>